Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have this major M588 CB radio that I got as a job lot of radios. But before we start don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that lot and let's get down to it. So yeah I got this major M588 as a job lot of radios and I didn't know whether it was going to be working or what condition it was going to be in but I was actually pleasantly surprised to find that it was not too bad to be honest not too bad at all so everything looks original apart from the core in that vco that's completely wrong none of the normal 059 performance mods have been done c11's still the same that needs to be changed out but we turn it over and we see some telltale signs of strangeness going on now what somebody's actually done here is they've actually used the capacitor dropper to drop to minus 5 kc and i presume that resistor and the wire is some form of old fm audio mod but we've got tools to do that and the transistor was for plus 10 kc so somebody had definitely done something to this to try and make it a bit more usable and the capacitor dropper did work, but yeah, I suppose it was okay in its day. But not a multitude of cut tracks and stuff, which was nice to see. So all in all, the radio was not too bad at all. So we're going to pull all these bits and pieces out. We're going to tidy up this area. And then we're going to do something with it, make it make it a little bit more, a little bit more up to date, and get it on frequency, and get this old radio singing again. So I'm just going to blatantly rip all these bits and pieces out, because we don't need them. We're going to be refreshing some parts with newer parts and fitting one of my FM audio VCOs in there so we can get rid of this old FM audio which just looks like it was a, a resistor going to the VCO I'm sure it would have made a bit of a difference because we all know that these 059s were a little bit muffly on FM due to the way it modulated the crystal and not the VCO so there's our pile of parts two switches coming out so seeing these switches have been used for something else we're gonna repurpose those switches anyway so let's get the PLL out because we're going to be replacing that and we'll get the the VCO out with its bad core should we say I'm sure it would have worked it's only had to cover 80 channels I'm sure there probably wouldn't be a problem but it's coming out anyway should have a low permeability core in there and as, you, as you can see somebody's put the wrong core in it but never mind sure it would have been fine and out with the PLL chip as you can see the date code on there 45th week of 1980 so nice and old I'm sure there's nothing wrong with this PLL chip Remember, there it is, PLL 0 to AG, 8045, not too bad. And we're going to pull out the components that we need to remove for the FM audio mod. And the inductor has just flew over there, which I didn't notice, but we'll get that out. And there's our three parts we need to move, remove for the 
start of the FM audio mod. And we're going to pull the bias resistor as well. Replace that with a 15 ohm. And reset the bias correctly. Because they always were a little bit low on these. That's all the mod we need to do for the TX stage on this. So I've been over it, I've cleaned up some areas. I've been over it with alcohol and a toothbrush and we've got the area looking a little bit more tidy now. Moved the link to the bottom of the board. And there's my FM audio VCO with volt feed on it as well. And today we're going to be using this microchips mini board. So we're not we're not going to be putting UK40 on this. We're just going to be putting 10kc and minus 5kc on it. Because not everything has to have UK FM on it. So there's our bias set. We should be happy. And there's our switches wired up for the 10kc and minus 5kc. Connected to my mod board, which is a PLL replacement. Then we'll disable the 41 to 80 display. I suppose I could have left it as, as 41 to 80, but yeah. this radio I fancied just putting it as 1 to 40. So we'll do a quick bit of alignment, 10 240s, nice and on frequency, 26.965, not too bad, 27.415, yep, that's good enough. Very nice. So a little look over the tiny SA, at the primary and the harmonic. Everything seems to be fine there. Just see if we can bring the harmonic down a little bit, just adjust the 54 meg trap down a little bit, and yeah, we can get it get it attenuated that 54 meg signal a bit better. So yeah, that's all good. Yep, happy with that. Have a look with the two-tone on the SSB transmission. And everything looks good there. No flat top. Nicely crossed over in the centre. So, yep. SSB transmission looks good. Let's have a look at the receiver sensitivity. So, minus 110 dB. Better than 12 dB sign add. Yep, that's good. That's nice and sensitive. Yep, that's nice and sensitive. That's as good as it should be. It's definitely not deaf anyway. So, yep, that's fine. No further action needed. On, um... On the receiver part, just going up to the top end of high band there, just to check. And yep, we can get it a little bit better. Now somebody had actually removed this resistor, R25, which caused me a bit of a headache. Because that stopped the FM audio. But as soon as we found that, we got the FM audio working. And to finish it off, we've had the cases powder coated. As you can see, nice job done there. I do like these powder coated cases, they are very nice. And to finish the job off, some nice new screws.
Excellent. So this radio's not in bad condition, really. I've seen them in a lot worse condition. But this one, warranted. Making great again. So we've got plus 10kc, minus 5kc, mid and high band, side band's working great. You can hear it on 38 LSB there, listening to the Americans. Brilliant. So, another radio saved. A nice quick little project there. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.